Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. able to hear Charlie and Flo. Sure, Mrs. Bradley, that's okay. Besides, it's the first chance I've had today to rest my frazzled nerves and shattered eardrums. Yeah, we're real sorry, Mrs. Bradley. Yeah, we're also darn anxious to do good in that Hooterville Hawk contest next month. We kind of get carried away. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, for the time being, would you mind being carried away to the kitchen for some milk and cookies? <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Mom. Mom. <laughs> and please, chew quietly. <laughs> Uh, here you are, Kate. Today's mail. One postcard? Better than yesterday. Three bills and a circular on low-cost Las Vegas weekends. <laughs> Why, this is from Mr. Norman Curtis of the Railroad. Nutty Norman? You're kidding. What does he say? He says he's in Europe. That's no surprise. He also says he's president of the Railroad. <laughs> sure, Joe, let's see. He says he's in Europe, having a wonderful... Can't make out the next word. Vacation. That's right, vacation. Uh, the people here are very... Friendly. Yeah. And the weather is... I couldn't make that out either. Delightful. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. I plan to be here three months. Regards to everyone. A sincerely, Norman Curtis. Since when did they start spelling sincerely L-O-V-E? Charlie, that's just, just his way of being friendly. I think it was very nice of Mr. Curtis to think of us all the way over here from Paris. Paris? <laughs> he's pathetic. No, he's not. And I'm worried. Suppose Mr. Bedlow comes up with another scheme to close down the cannonball while he's gone. Now, you know that Mr. Curtis is always on our side. So what? Nutty Norman ain't any more president of that railroad than I am. I don't know. But in some way, Mr. Curtis seems to be Mr. Bedlow's superior. That don't prove nothing. Who ain't? <laughs> As your superior, I have a right to know why you're requesting a temporary transfer to Hooterville. Mr. Giddings, you know that that miserable Hooterville cannonball is the one rotten apple in the whole CNFW barrel. Close down that line while Curtis is in Europe, and you'll be able to walk into the next stockholders' meeting as the, well, shall we say, the CNFW man of the year. I have strict orders from Norman Curtis not to close down the cannonball. But you're not going to close it down. You'll be improving it. This scheme is even sneakier than I thought. You've lost me. J.B., appoint me superintendent of that line, and I'll institute an efficiency campaign that'll make those people down there wish they'd never heard of the Hooterville Cannonball. You're beginning to find me. Believe me, believe me, J.B., 
When I get through with them down there, you won't have to close down the line. They'll do it themselves. I'd be grateful for the chance. And I won't be bucking Curtis's orders, either. Oh, more than that, you'll be the stockholder's hero. Remember, J.B., this company's ready for new and dynamic leadership. <laughs> Bedlow, I'm sending you to Hooterville as superintendent of that line. Uh, but there's less than a month until the stockholders' meeting. If you're going to get the job done in time, you'd better leave as soon as possible. Whatever you say, J.B. <laughs> Kate, Joe. Hi, Hi boy. boy. Beautiful day, ain't it? Makes a man glad he's alive. Good morning, everybody. I wish I was dead. <laughs> Homer, Bedlow, what are you doing in Hordeville? That's like asking a fox what he's doing in the hen house. <laughs> oh, that's very witty, Mr. Carson. I'm going to enjoy living with you with the shady rests. You're staying here for how long? Only as long as it takes to get the job done. Uh, Mrs. Bradley, do you have yearly rates? Mr. Bedlow, what are you talking about? Tell me, Charlie, any more foolish questions? But, Mr. Bedlow, I... I... Now, now, stop mumbling, man, when you're talking to the new superintendent of the Hooterville Cannonball. Now, come along, let's get going. Get going? Where to? To work. We've got a schedule to keep. What schedule? This schedule. A schedule for the Cannonball? The thought of that makes my heart jump up into my throat, Mr. Bedlow. <laughs> well, swallow it. <laughs> let's get going. We've got to be in Hooterville in 12 minutes. What for? Because it says so here. There ain't nothing happening in the Hooterville this time of day. What do we do when we get there? Go back to Pixley. Why? Because it says so here. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, we can't follow a schedule like this. Why, it calls for 14 runs a day. 15. You're forgetting the 4 a.m. milk run. Who drinks milk at 4 a.m.? <laughs> now stop stalling and get on a train. Just a minute. The boys haven't eaten yet. And Charlie always gets dizzy spells when he doesn't get his proper nourishment. Yeah, he's been known to get dizzy 10 or 12 times a day. <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, we're not leaving till we have our lunch. Just a minute. I'd like to read to you Article 7 from the Book of Rules of the CNFW Railroad. Insubordination. <laughs> Any employee who disobeys an order from a superior is subject to immediate dismissal. <laughs> I guess you better go, boys. And I'll fix you some sandwiches to take along with you. Uh, 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 uh. Article 26. Eating or drinking while on duty constitutes a violation of the CNFW rules governing department. This is also covered by Clause 96. <laughs> Road etiquette. We get the point, Mr. Bedlow. Don't worry, boys. I'll keep the food warm for when you stop on your way back. What stop? You might as well know now, Mrs. Bradley, that the cannonball is only making three stops a day at the Shady Rest. In the morning, to pick me up, at noon, for lunch, and in the evening, to bring me back again. Is that last stop necessary? <laughs> it's covered by Article 32, welfare and comfort of the supervisory personnel. So that's what it's all about. I might have known it's another one of your low-down, sneaky schemes to shut down the cannonball. I couldn't have described it better myself, Mrs. Bradley. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> We're pulling out in one minute. <laughs> I ain't going. You have to. That's what he's trying to do, get you to quit. Just like he's trying to shut down the Shady Rest with those three stops a day. I knew that guy had never changed. He's got a one-track mind. Yeah, the track from Hooterville to Pixley. <laughs> he's aiming to make it so tough on us that we're going to shut down the cannonball ourselves. Then we got to get him out of the Shady Rest. Oh, no. It's better to have him where we can keep an eye on him and... Know what he's up to. Well, what are you aiming to do about him, Kate? We just got outlast him. This is a war of nerves. Well, that's the only trouble. He's got more nerve than we got. True.
Let's get rolling. <laughs> all right, Pratt, this isn't the old days. Let's look alive. I'm sorry, Kate. That's all I got time for now. <laughs> You did pretty good today. You almost got through your first helping. <laughs> well, Mrs. Bradley is still hanging on, are you? We got lots of patients, Mr. Bedlock. Yes, but no guests. Not since I put in that new schedule. I don't know why Pratt and Smoot haven't thrown in the towel. Unless it's because they wanted for one good cry. You never managed to beat us before. Don't you think you're a mite overconfident? Nonsense. I could finish you all off in one day. My only reason for stretching it out is my analyst told me... I don't get enough pleasure out of life. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Beautiful evening, isn't it? Oh, do my eyes deceive me? Is it possible that I am witnessing a touch of communal despair? What a picture you make. If only I was an artist and could immortalize this moment in oils, I assure you the painting would occupy a, a prominent place on my office wall and forever in my heart. Mr. Bedlow, if you've got a heart, I'd like to see it. Yeah, me too. Right out in the open. <laughs> What'd you do with Floyd and Charlie? They're fast asleep at their post in the locomotive cab. That way they thought they'd get a good night's sleep. Those two poor boys sure have a good rest coming to them. Not a chance. In two and a half hours' time, we're taking a practice emergency run. Oh, what a lovely night for a train ride. You won't think it's such a lovely night when all you get for supper is a cucumber sandwich. I had a hunch something like that would happen. The Pixley Diner barbecues a fine chicken. <laughs> when do you girls bring a plate up to my room? But oh, by the way, Mrs. Bradley, since you won't be cooking dinner for me tonight, I'll naturally expect you to deduct it from my bill. If I was a younger and stronger man, I'd sure show him. Yeah, Uncle Joe, you'd knock his block off, huh? No. I'd walk all the way to Pixley and get me some of that chicken. <laughs> Will you stop that racket? Mrs. Bradley, what kind of a hotel is this where a man can't get a decent two and a half hours sleep? But it's so early. Early? In another 45 minutes, it's going to be almost 9 o'clock. <laughs> Have you forgotten I'm to take a practice emergency run? Who could forget an absolute necessity like that? This is too much. You're right, Mr. Bedlow, this is too much. We've had enough of your ridiculous rules and schedules. You've been acting like a child, complaining like a child, and now you're even going to bed like a child. What you need is a good spanking. No, no, Mrs. Bradley. I'm a guest here. I didn't pay for this kind of treatment. That's okay. The spanking's on the house. You know, Mrs. Bradley, at this moment, you remind me very much of my mother. 
And we didn't get along either. Your mother sounds like a fine, intelligent woman. And at this moment, I just wish I was your mother. It sounds to me like you're not happy with my patronage. We ain't happy with any part of you. Very well. I'll leave the first thing in the morning. I'm sure I can get suitable accommodations in Pixley. Okay, girl, start dancing again and the heck with you, Bedlow. Very well, Mrs. Bradley. Since I won't be living here, there won't be need for the cannonball to stop at the Shady Rest anymore. I think you spoke a little too harshly, Kate. <laughs> Don't worry about him, Uncle Joe. I, I wouldn't want him for a guest if he was the last one we ever had. And I think he is. <laughs> We might as well face up to it. This time, Bedlow's got us licked. The Shady Rest ain't gonna have no more guests than Floyd and Meese through. Charlie's right, Kate. Me and him's tired on two hounds chasing a fast rabbit. <laughs> I'll tell you what Floyd and me done. We told him in so many words that if the cannonball ain't stopping at the Shady Rest no more, we're through running it. Oh, you shouldn't have done that, Charlie. That's exactly what he wants. If you and Floyd quit, he can shut down the cannonball. Well, he's going to do it anyhow, sooner or later. Where'd Bedlow go? Into the city, CNFW stockholders meeting he had to attend. You know, somebody ought to tell them stockholders how their money's being wasted, paying a man $30,000 a year to be superintendent of a one-track line. You mean the railroad's paying Bedlow $30,000 a year? He was bragging about it a couple of days ago. That's the biggest train robbery since Jesse James. <laughs> That's our answer. Oh, wait a minute, Kate. We may be desperate, but robbing the cannonball ain't going to help. That's not what I mean. I mean that somebody should tell the stockholders how their money is being wasted. Why, they'd never stand still for a $30,000 a year man running this line. You're right, Kate. They'll put Bedlow where he belongs, back on his regular job, and we can get to living normal again. Yeah, but who's going to tell the stockholders? Us. We'll go to the meeting. Well, they'll never let us in. Oh, yes, they will if we're stockholders. Hey, you don't expect us to buy CNFW stock. All we need is one share. My golly, Kate, I believe you've blundered onto something. <laughs> well, thank you, Uncle Joe. Now, are we all for it? Aye. Aye. <laughs> it's unanimous. <laughs> now then, I'll get Sam Drucker to buy the share of stock for us, and then with luck, we'll be buying Mr. Bedlow a one-way ticket out of our lives forever. J.B., when those two imitation railroad men told me they were quitting, I knew that my mission was accomplished. You did it, huh? Yes, sir, J.B. We've seen the last of that disgraceful traveling eyesore. Good. Then I can announce that the cannonball is out of business. It's going to be scrapped. Right. That's one headache that's gone forever. Oh, looks like we're getting some visitors. Oh. Excuse me a minute, J.B. Just a minute. You can't come in here. Why, hello, Mr. Bedlow. Well, this meeting is for the stockholders of the CNFW. That's us. Here's our share of stock. Hooterville Investment Fund. And we're the Homer Bedlow Fan Club. <laughs> oh, that's very flattering. It's gratifying to know that my modest efforts in your community haven't gone unnoticed. <laughs> Bedlow must go. Yeah, there, there was two more words telling where, but we ran out of girls. <laughs> but a few people have come here to save the cannonball. I'm afraid you're a little late. What do you mean? Well, if you'll just sit down and make yourself comfortable, the service is about to begin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have an important announcement to make, which I'm sure will please all of the stockholders. It is with great pride that I am able to inform you that the one disgraceful, outmoded eyesore of the entire CNFW system has been eliminated. The Hooterville Pixley branch line is no longer in operation. That's a good move, Giddings. It'll save us a lot of money. It will? Yes. One of our visiting stockholders, a lady from out of town, has made us aware of an interesting fact, which our comptroller has confirmed. 
We stood to lose $30,000 on that branch line this year, the very amount that we were paying the superintendent. Well, since you're closing down the line, why not get rid of the superintendent and save the $30,000? What? Sure, we don't need a superintendent for a line that no longer exists. Fire him. Fire the superintendent? <laughs> Bedlow, it seems that if we don't have the cannonball, you won't have a job. You're in the same boat with us. And this time the rat's going down with the ship. As one sailor to another, I think we should pull for shore together. Well, I hate to admit it, Mrs. Bradley, but you're right. Uh, gentlemen, uh, gentlemen and ladies, uh, just a moment. You're making a terrible mistake. You can't shut down the Hooterville cannonball. That's the greatest little train that was ever built. Whoever says that that magnificent example of early American railroading should be scrapped deserves to be scrapped. Call me a sentimental and tender-hearted if you must, but to me, that beautiful and distinctive example of Americana is the pride of the C and of W. But as I understand it, the Hooterville Cannonball runs on an outdated, inefficient line that, that uh, doesn't even keep a schedule. That's not true. Well, since when? Since you sent us the best superintendent in railroad history. Why, you can't shut down that line after what he's done for it. He has given us a schedule that outdoes any other line in the country. Right, Charlie? Fourteen runs a day, plus the milk run. And Mr. Bedlow has shown us the light. At 4 a.m. In the dark. But it's still costing us $30,000. Well, when you want the best, you got to pay for it. Exactly. What's a paltry $30,000 compared to the welfare and happiness of the fine and noble people of that community who depend upon that line? And what about these two self-sacrificing individuals who run that great little train? I refer to my good friends and close companions, Charlie Pratt and Floyd Smoot, two brave and selfless creatures who I've seen deprived of food and sleep just to keep the cannonball rolling. And gentlemen, with us today, is the proprietress of the Shady Rest Hotel. I couldn't love her more, even if she were my own mother. <laughs> and her three charming daughters, who, by the way, are my fan club. Must Bedlow go! Must Bedlow go! Gentlemen, you haven't lived unless you've seen these three charming creatures give one of her delightful folk dances. What more can I say, gentlemen? The people in this valley are our kind of people, the greatest people in the world. Let the CNFW be known as the railroad with our heart. Gentlemen, I beg you, do not scrap the Hooterville cannonball. <laughs> I suggest that the CNFW be known as the Railroad with a Heart. And that we reopen the Hooterville Pixley line and keep on the superintendent. Of course. Uh, gentlemen, if we don't want to keep our wonderful superintendent on the Hooterville Cannonball. Well, why not? You were just telling us how much you wanted him. Well, I may be a woman, but underneath it all, I'm a stockholder. It, it'd be very selfish of us to want to keep Mr. Bedlow in Hooterville. He should be sent to other troubled spots. <laughs> yeah. Trouble's his middle name. <laughs> did you hear that, Giddings? I certainly did. And I know just the place where Mr. Bedlow should be sent. To our newly acquired railroad line in Kodiak, Alaska. <laughs> Yeah. We owe it all to Mr. Bedlow. He was terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we won't forget you, Bedlow, even though you are way up there in Alaska. You can thank Kate for keeping your job for you. Oh, it was nothing. After all, we were in the same boat together, weren't we, Mr. Bedlow? Only while we were sinking. From now on, it's war again. <laughs> of course. After you get back from Alaska. You know, Mr. Bedlow, I think those Eskimos up there are going to take to you just like we did.
Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.